topic has as you can see my topic has six words so we linguists generally move word by word in our procedure so i would like to begin with describing the title first so if you can see there are six words in this title so uh, the words when we say words words are of generally two types first type is content words so content words are the words which have some imagery some object some ideas to associate with when we say a word for example if i say black so a black screen may come to your mind a black box may come to your mind or a black paint somewhere on a wall may come to your mind things like that if i say uh, let us say tennis so the game of sport uh, may come to your mind or a tennis racket may come to your mind or uh, a, a favorite tennis player may come to your mind so these are the words which are content words so generally we have nouns verbs adverbs and adjectives uh, from the parts of speech category fall into content words mm -hmm. Uh, in this title, you can say we have four such words, artificial intelligence, multilingual, and classroom. There are two other words in the center you can see. Here you can see there are two words, four and a. These are called functional words. Functional means they are there for a purpose to establish connection between the words, between the other content words to establish a relationship like that. So the primary difference between these two categories is that the, the functional words like for here and a, their meanings do not evolve. For example, you might not have heard in your mother tongue or in any language that there was a new pronoun added to that language or a new preposition added to that language. You have, you have, you have not heard about that. But if you look at the dictionary that uh, gets updated. So the categories like nouns and verbs, they keep evolving every year. The dictionary adds some words. For example, Indian words like mantra, yoga, all such words were added. Uh, even the meanings of one particular word evolved. For example, we all are using a computer mouse now. That mouse, earlier before we uh, became the habitual of this mouse, the mouse used to mean only one thing, that was the animal. Right. So that's how uh, I wanted to uh, give you a brief understanding about the uh, categorization of words. Uh, let us go to the title. Artificial, intelligence, multilingual, and classroom. Artif uh, I think multilingual classroom is something which you all are aware of. Artificial intelligence is the buzzword these days. So let us make, a let us develop a general understanding about it. Let us take them one by one. Artificial in general means something that is created by man, man-made. For example, uh, when we say man-made resources, natural resources, when we talk about, we say man-made man -made resources and natural resources. So things that are not available naturally and created by man, whether using his or her own hands or by machine is artificial. Intelligence. What is intelligence? Intelligence is generally the ability to learn, to understand, to think and decide. This ability is a human capacity. This ability is missing in animals, in non-humans. So when this ability is constructed artificially by machine, that is artificial intelligence. When machine helps you take the decision, when machine decides for you on behalf of you, when machine understands it for you, all such phenomena will come under artificial intelligence. All such phenomena will come under artificial intelligence. So uh, before we uh, venture into this presentation and we hit the topic, uh, I would like to make a disclaimer. Gen uh, 
presently the ai that is that has become the buzzword is related to generative ai gen ai so i would like to make a disclaimer here that this is an evolutionary technology and what i say today what i claim today to be a fact or a standard today might evolve in a week's time or 10 days time and there will be a modification to it. So we should all be ready to adapt. Right? Okay. So uh, difference between real and artificial, it is important to understand. And I would like to explain it through uh, the five sensory organs we have based on that. If something is real or not, how do we determine it? We determine it by touching it, feeling it, tasting it, listening to it, or taking a smell of it. Right. So we use our sensory organs to find out if something is for real. So based on that line of thought, if we define artificial, then the uh, we would see that artificial intelligence, the kind of uh, Generative AI, what produces is not something which we can sniff or we can touch, but we can see, we can hear. Okay. Uh, I would also like to make it clear here when we talk about artificial intelligence, it uses two primary organs. One is eye, and another is related to cognition. Okay. So I, in AI, the eye is the camera. So, role of camera is very important in AI. Okay. Another thing is mind. So, mind, when we talk about mind, that is where natural language comes into picture. So, I will talk about it uh, in a while, uh, why natural language is so crucial for generative AI. So, uh, AI is, like I, we all agree that AI is the buzzword and uh, its role in education is getting defined day by day. So what are the things that can be AI's portion in education? So we can think about various things like the functions that are involved in education, teaching system. For example, when you assignment, assignment, assign, designing an assignment or testing an assessment or preparing it, uh, mm -hmm. lesson plan or the lecture itself or the PowerPoint presentations. These all have already AI's penetration into the system. So we would uh, try to see how uh, and how we can incorporate it in a multilingual setup that we generally have in an Indian classroom. Mm -hmm. So importance of multilingual education has been a UNESCO mandate. It was mandated by UNESCO in the 80s itself. The current government has made it a policy now to make it a part of our education system. We also need to understand our linguistic rights. It is UNESCO mandates that it is a person's right to get education in his or her mother tongue. And by doing so, by implementing this NAP 2020, the government of India ensures each citizen's linguistic rights and thereby a social justice. Uh, there used to be, or there have been earlier cases when uh, students have dropped out from classrooms due to language barrier. So this is something that NEP 2020 tackles by providing us, uh, uh, making a provision for mother tongue based education, MTBE. So the thrust on mother tongue can be found in clause number 4.11, 4.12, and 4.14 in the NAP document. And uh, educational benefits, like we all know already about the cognitive advantages and the social cognitive advantages yeah. that it may create in through multilingual education, the opportunities it is going to create uh, economic space that it is going to create for uh, lesser known languages or the languages which have been marginalized. However, uh, there are many challenges when we talk about multilingual education. The first and foremost challenge is related to resources and another is to access and inclusion. The teaching learning material is 
yet to be developed in the mother tongues. Uh, we have 22 scheduled languages with us at the moment. But if you look at the higher education, let us say uh, education in the STEM subjects or engineering, let us say medical science, uh, education is available in English only. So NEP 2020 not just talks about mother tongue based education at the primary education, but at the tertiary levels. So teaching learning material development of that is something that is a real concern. So uh, when we talk about the role of AI in multilingual education, uh, we particularly talk about generative AI, which is going to play a big part in education. So when it is, uh, uh, I, I mentioned about natural language earlier. So generative AI primarily bases itself on large language models through natural language processing. Uh, to understand what is natural language processing, I would like to draw your attention to uh, those, uh, I, uh, the people who were the early users of internet, uh, let us say in 2005 to 2010, you might recall that Google Translate, whatever it translated to from English to any Indian language, it used to become a joke, right? The kind of translation it made. So it was absence of natural language back then. Ever since computational linguistics uh, evolved and it incorporated natural language. It, um, uh, ever since computational linguistics incorporated natural language processing into uh, machine translation and all such stuff, uh, the results were more optimized. Uh, natural language processing is exactly the way a human brain receives a language and produces similar capacity has been and is being generated in the machine. So earlier, like I mentioned about the uh, translations becoming a joke, the same. Uh, am I audible clearly to all of you? There's a feedback that I'm not being audible. Yes, sir, audible, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sir, sir, excuse me, sir. Yes. Some, some other voice also uh, here, sir. Okay. Let me see what so, so I was talking about natural language processing. So uh, the way a human brain receives language inputs and and uh, interprets it and based on that decides to respond to linguistic outputs. So similar capacity has been developed and still being developed uh, in generative AI through NLU, natural language understanding. Earlier, this capacity was missing. They were directly going into NLG, natural language generation. So natural language understanding is developed through data training. This is why all the generative AI that you are seeing, for example, many of you have already used chat GPT. So the output that it gives is not something it creates on its own. It's primarily based on a pre-training data, large language models. I mean, if you say one sentence like, I eat roti, I eat rice, this in English, this can be a fixed one sentence. But in Indian languages, these three words can be wherever and they can still give you a meaningful sentence. So therefore, for one sentence, there can be multiple sentences. So similarly, there are, uh, even if you think of only English, there are only 26 alpha. But based on that, there are numerous words. Using those words, you can make numerous sentences. And this is why probably uh, Google, when they were establishing their parent company, they named it Alphabet because no. but because it's a capacity to make endless sentences, endless words. So this capacity uh, was first thought about and then natural language understanding was something that needed to be developed for a generative AI. This is why large number of sentences and words were used through a system of 
tokenization. So we'll not go into the technical details of those things, but uh, tokenization is each word is a token for the GPT when we give it the input. And based on its valency, it decides what can come as a response. So uh, natural language understanding and natural language generation are two interrelated uh, phenomena for natural language processing. So all the GPTs that you are seeing at the moment uh, have the capacity to translate their translation tools. Then they have uh, capacity to transcribe and provide subtitles in multiple languages. Named entity recognition, NER. Uh, you might have seen recently there was an ad by Google where a lady used to draw a circle to a particular image and it used to search. So that was Google Lens. So from image to text, that was the basic Certain large language models. Large language models is what generative AI is particularly based on LLMs. Then text to speech and speech to text. For example, you are already uh, doing voice search on Google or YouTube or wherever you press the mic and you say something, it does the searching for you. And then we have speech to speech. This is the latest edition. Uh, we have an Indian AI based on this. I am going to talk about it today. Speech to speech will be when uh, you will say something and it will instantly on real time translate it into your desired Indian language in the audio. Please mark that distinction here. This is text to speech and speech to text, but this is speech to speech. So, uh, when we talk about the tools that are AI powered, uh, we have largely GPTs, like ChatGPT are already using. GPT stands for Generative Free Training Model, Free Train Transformers. GPT, Generative Free Train Transformers. So, when uh, this began, uh, this initially began for six Indian classical languages, uh, Tamil, Sanskrit, Kannada, Telugu, Malayalam, and Odia. And then later it was developed to other languages. So today I'm going to show one AI tool to you, which would uh, give you outputs in around 15 Indian languages. So it is supported by CIDR Fusion, GPT-4, this is uh, OpenAI. Chat GPT 4.0, Cloud 3, Gemini 1.5, this is by Google, and Lama 3, this is by Meta. Meta is the parent company for WhatsApp and Facebook that we are already using. So, this tool that I'm going to demonstrate to you today is called CIDR. CIDR. So, this is called CIDR because this comes as a tool that remains available on the side panel of your computer, and it is an AI writing assistant. It will help you. In, uh, like I told you, showed you about the kind of functions and AI tool would do. It will uh, do primary functions that are required for teaching or for activities related to teaching. For example, summarization, translation, and all such stuff. So uh, I would first show you how do we go about it, and then we will have a hands-on practice on it. So at the bottom, you can see here, I have placed the website for it. It's cider.ai. All the AI websites have adopted the domain name AI. For example, the websites in India have .in, companies have .com, organizations have .org. Similarly, the AI organizations, they have .ai as their domain name. So let us go to cider.ai. Is my screen with CIDR website visible to you? Can one of you confirm? Yes, sir. It's visible. Okay. All right. Thank you. So you can see see here at the left, you can see my uh, cursor. This is a CIDR chat GPT sidebar with uh, preview, O1 preview and O1 mini now. So right at the bottom, you can see it is add to Chrome. If you click it, it will download it for your system. So here at the right bottom, you can see here it says add to Chrome. If you click here, 
Sorry. It will ask you to add to extension. Once you do that, it gets downloaded here. My internet speed is not as fast as it is usually. So you can see now here that I have a wired frame image here. And if you, you need to pin it. So if you click this, this button, it will give you the option to pin. So if you pin it, it will be part of your side tools. You can see at the bottom here, I have the wired brain image with me. Okay. So now let me open uh, any website, let us say a news website. yeah so we have a news item open now so This is a paid news item. Uh, let us go back to something which is okay. So you see here we have a news item open here. Uh, 96 million views in Rising Advice to send ICC and invoice. So this uh, look at the bottom right of my screen. I'm moving, I'm opening my cursor here. So this wired brain. We open this. If we open this, you can see here a chat box opens with several instructions. So you can see the first thing that I'm showing to you here is switch models. So it is giving you Cider Fusion, GPT. This is open here, Chat GPT, Cloud 3, Gemini 1.5, and Lama. So this is a, these are the music versions and these are the advanced versions. If you use the advanced version, this will require you. These are premium features, so this will require premium. So you can pick any of them as per your liking. You can see here, it's giving you to giving you the option to translate this page. So you need to select your target language that you want the content to be translated into. Here it is giving you the summary. So if you click this, this will give you the Summary. That, that is a uh, paid feature. Let us go to these things. Uh, you can see here the Caesar image. This, if you click this, it will allow you to take screenshot. Okay. By taking the screenshot, it gives you the option to extract text. So if you see the text in the image is here. Now you can so you you can write a prompt for the desired outcome. Prompting is an important feature of generative AI. You need to be very particular and clear about what you want. So, for example, you can see you could have just written translate into Tamil, but the above text would mean this only. Okay? So, if you give this, it will give you the Tamil version of it. Then you can also give further prompts.
So if you ask it to give two multiple choice questions, it will give you like this. If you want the same in Tamil, you need to give. Right. So you can do the same with other languages. So how this is going to be useful in a classroom, you can now, uh, being teachers, you can think of it. Uh, uh, a text in front of you is there on a system and you can instantly generate questions. And suppose you have a multilingual classroom and there are students. So you can generate multilingual questions, um, MCP, uh, sorry, MCQ question answers for them and summarize it in their mother tongue and make it available, right? So this can be used in multiple ways. Uh, you can see a uh, attachment pin symbol here, right beside the Caesar symbol. It supports, it supports PDF, Word doc, Excel, CSV, and all such files. And this has a limit up to six files per day. So at the moment, you can get six such tasks free for a day. And it can do the reading of the page also for you. So this is one uh, tool that I wanted to demonstrate to you. Now I would like uh, the people uh, to do a hands-on on this, uh, download CIDR for your computer and uh, put it in your, put it as an extension in your browser and make use of it. I give you a couple of minutes for this. Please go ahead. The website is, I'll open it again for you, cider.ai. I have highlighted it here in the address bar, you can see. If there's any difficulty, you can write all messages on the chat box and uh, do not mark it to everyone. Mark it to me. My name is Rajiv Murto. You find me there in the everyone place. Here you type my name and you will find me. So address the messages directly to me so that I can answer them. Yeah. Yeah. Have you all been able to download and get the extension for CIDR on your systems? Any difficulty there? Participants, please respond. Yeah, 
Sir, it's working, sir. I downloaded and added to my screen. Now I am getting a Telugu newspaper profit and post in the side. Okay. okay. You may share uh, screenshot, screenshots of uh, having downloaded and uh, being successfully getting the extension on the chat box, but address it directly to me, uh, not on the general chat box. Participants, do we have anyone uh, who is facing any difficulty in installing this? Please raise hand if you have any difficulty. Or else we'll move ahead. All right, uh, I presume that one of you have been successfully, uh, you have been successful in getting the extension for this. So let us move ahead. Right. Sir, 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 yes. Sir, is the uh, app and the extension uh, both are same, sir, or different? No, extension is different. App is different. App is something that you would uh, require to install on a maybe a mobile phone or a tablet. Sir. Extension, okay. yeah, extension is for the browser. Acha, acha. So extension so, won't take any space from the phone, whereas the app will take some space. True, true. Uh, if, uh, if, uh, and, and you know, if you are going through the app, then you need to move out from one screen to another. But this is something we are we are trying to learn uh, as a assistance in our sidebar that will remain in the same screen and will help. Okay, okay, got it, got it, sir. Thank you. Uh, sir, actually, I'm not able to uh, install that. I have installed, but mm -hmm. the second part, actually, second part uh, from where, actually, I can't tell you right now, actually, but from second part, I am not able to do that. I can't actually proceed more on what to do. All right. Uh, so please All right. kindly repeat. Uh, uh. The instructions, you mean the instructions? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So, uh, basically, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm showing it once again for all of you. Uh, please look at the screen. So, I went to cider.ai. This was the website, cider.ai. I went there. If you open this, the homepage itself will give you the option to add to Chrome. So, if you click it, uh, I hope your default browser is Chrome only. If it is Edge, or Mozilla, then please change it to Chrome. When we will give you sufficient time for that. If if it is not happening, then that might be one of the reasons. So if you add it to the Chrome, it would reflect here, okay, on the right top corner. So if you click here, it will give you the option to pin. See, it has turned blue because I have pinned it. If you don't pin it, it will remain like this. So I have pinned it. So once I pin it, 
I get all the functions. Once I pin it, the wired green will symbol will show here at the right bottom. Okay, and this is where you will get the. This will be the basically the workstation for you to do um, functions that I showed you. Are we clear, uh, Ms. Anur sir, Rahman sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Great. So, I have personally sent you the screenshots so that is showing the app okay. installation. And... Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll take a look at. I'll take a look at it uh, uh, when we have the hands on. Uh, let us move ahead and. One submission. Sir, one submission. Uh, going on the browser, it is, it is showing that item currently unavailable. Please check the uh, troubleshooting guide. I'm getting a pop up like this, sir. Ah, so maybe no, no. So your pop up, pop up is blocked. That's why you need to. Okay. Yeah, you need to allow the pop up. Achha, achha. Okay, 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 sir. Thank you. Okay, so let us move ahead in the presentation. Uh, so I demonstrated to you to cider an AI snipping tool, which extracts the text for you, and it supports various file types. It showed, yeah. I showed you the uh, attachment pin symbol, and it can read for you in Indian and classical languages, and it translates and summarizes. I, I showed it through a news item. You can do it for a textbook from your classroom and it can generate question and answer. So these are the five various functions that help you in a teaching learning scenario in a classroom or off classroom uh, through CIDR, okay? So uh, I told you in the beginning that generative AI is at the stage of evolution. So for example, I have placed here one, uh, news article and uh, a translation of it in Hindi, and there was an error. So how to turn that error into an opportunity? I'm demonstrating it here. For example, it is saying, RG Kar Medical College mein ek dusre vars ki PGT doctor ka dardnaak rape aur hatya ho gai. So you can see here, this one is for marked as feminine gender, and here it is marked for masculine gender. So this there, there is a problem in the Concordance. There is a problem in the gender agreement. So this is an error. So you make it as an error and omission question also. Apart from MCQs I showed to you, you can make an error and omission question based on such results as well. So we'll have a hands-on practice session now. Uh, you download it and uh, see if it is working for you. I'll give you... Uh, maybe three minutes for this. Those who have not been able to do it, please do it. And those who have any questions on it, please ask your questions. Uh, sir, can you show the previous slide once again? Uh, okay. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sir, hope this works. Uh, I actually, I have to try to download on iPhone. So, so iPhone also. It will be the same, no? Uh, I'm not quite sure about how does it work through phones. I have worked. I'm trying it on. I'm trying it on that also. Uh, please try oh. because I, I do not have. Any... Yeah, it is available on uh, iPhone uh, app. It should be. It should be. It should be. It's yes. a global okay. tool, so it should be. Yes. But I have generally tried it on uh, okay. desktops it's, only. So it's Cider AI. AI. Okay. Cider AI. Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir, uh, on the, the screen you were explaining how it identifies errors and omissions. Can you can you tell it once again, sir, if you don't know? Yeah, I said like I was using Claude three Haiku. This was the GPT I used. You can find it in the Cider uh, GPT choices I showed to you. There were uh, Chat GPT, Cider Fusion. Then there was this one Claude three Haiku. Then Gemini. All such things were there. Lama was there. So I had selected Claude 3 Haiku and I had translated one article which was like this. Okay. And then I asked it to summarize. So it gave me the summary in bullet points. So one of the bullet points has an error. 
okay uh, the error is related to gender identity uh, this might not be true for all the languages of india but many of the indo aryan languages have gender agreement marked on the verb uh, for example if it's a female which is the subject of a sentence then the verb of the sentence will also have an indication that it is a feminine so that error is here in the sentence it should be so, any uh, any madam, please mute yourself, or if you have any query, then please ask directly to me. Okay, so I was uh, somebody asked about this uh, screenshot, so I was telling about the error here. So, the uh, I have told you that generative AI is at the evolutionary stage at the moment, so there might be errors also. So, for example, here we have an error this car. And this is Hobay. So this does not sit comfortably with each other. Ka is for masculine gender and Hobay is for feminine gender. So this is a disagreement. So this is an error. So okay. if, if such I'll... errors, if such errors come, you can make error and omission question also based on that. That's what I was trying to say. How to convert that error into an opportunity? That was something I was telling. Uh, okay, so that, so you were telling that there can be errors. Uh, yes, not, yes, I, yes, it, yes. I thought it it identifies errors. No, I was no, wrong. no, no. So it, it can, it can. You have to give such prompts. For example, on any GPT, you would uh, write, you will provide the sample and give the prompt that please identify the grammatical errors in this semantical yeah. errors on this something like that you have to define that in the prompt if you do it will identify the prompts. Uh, sorry errors for example uh, last week when i had to submit something somewhere i just uh, copied the entire word uh, entire content from the word document and i pasted it and i uh, gave the prompt uh, identify the grammatical errors and it highlighted all that which is a feature in uh, even grammarly also even when you are writing an email it is automatically comes these days uh, sir, sir, please uh, tell me again, the identify errors and omissions. So, uh, uh, did you take the screen, uh, I mean, screen source and select the text and then you, uh, you uh, ask uh, GPT to identify error and omissions, sir? Or no, 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 not that, not that. I have taken this screenshot particularly for this presentation. When I was doing it, I found this as an error. So I thought of showing this to you people, the participants, that these GPTs are at the evolutionary stage and there can be errors. So if there are errors, you should not reject it like that. You should rather make use of it by making it, converting it into a kind of question, like errors and omissions kind of question. That was the purpose. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All right, so let's move ahead then. Yes, sir, the similar app also available in Google Play. Is it, please, sir? Side uh, A, start and side key. Please come again. The similar app also available in Play Store, named as Cider AI Chart and Side Kick. S I D E K I C K, Side Kick. Yes, uh, I have no idea about that. Tool, right? I have no idea about that. This Cider AI is a global tool and it's being, uh, you know, okay. Meta, Google, and OpenAI all have given access to it as a single platform. So uh, this let us go for a standard tool uh, which has acceptance and which has MOUs between the, all the other major players. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, its data training is robust, you need to understand this. Okay, before Llama was launched, even Cisco is coming with its GPT in some days. IBM is going to come. So, CIDR is going to be a place where you will find all such things incorporated in one place. And uh, if, uh, chat GPT's result is inappropriate, then you can go to Llama. If Llama's, stuff, for example, this error that I found here is Claude 3 Haiku. So same error might not occur if I use it uh, with, let us say, chat GPT or let us say, Llama or something. So you will find all such things together in one place inside them. 
Okay, so that's why it is important. So, and then this is an era of competition. The moment you launch a product, there is a competitor, uh, there is a quick copy from that product immediately. So, if you go to those copies, then you might not, the data training is not that robust. So, you might not get good results. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, okay. All right, so I would now show you some more uh, AI assistive technology here. Uh, you can see, you all might have seen uh, Siri and Google Assistant, all those things which are voice assistant tools. Then second kind of platform is real-time language translation. Okay, Real-time language translation, this is, a, this is called Kibo. Kibo is a, uh, developed by Russian Lab, that's in Bangalore. So they have developed a device called Kivo, uh, where you have a scanner here, which is camera. I told you AI has two organs. One is eye. So eye is the camera, this one. And this is connected. You can see the wired connection here to the CPU of the monitor. So you place a document here. It's a printed document. You can place a handwritten document also. It will scan it and it will show it here and then convert it into a word file. And that word file, can be converted into an audio file also. Okay, so that happens in real time. And that audio file can be, or that word file can be translated immediately in real time into 16 Indian languages through Kibo. Okay, so this is again an AI based feature. So I showed summarization and other parts inside it. This is for translation and audio, uh, audio generation. Sir, this Kibo is a tool available. The, I mean, it's a hardware tool, sir. Yes, it's a hardware tool. One needs to purchase it. It's, it's uh, here in NCRT. We are using it. It is being used in Parliament of India also. Uh, for individuals use, it might be a little costly. So for institutional purposes, this is a good tool. What's the price, sir? May I know the price? It's so 50,000 plus. I do not okay. know exactly. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so, so uh, let's uh, do a quick overview of uh, AI and content development. So when we talk about content personalization, uh, AI helps us in content personalization, like you, like I showed it to you, uh, there was a news item in English, we customized it into Tamil and we then generated questions in Tamil, we summarized it into, into Tamil. So that's how we personalize it. I mean, you personalize it as per the requirement of the classroom and this can facilitate that. And we can generate multilingual content through that. Uh, do we, any participants, do we have any doubts so far or are we clear and we can move ahead? One of sir, the, how, sir, how do you rate the uh, the interface facility provided by Copilot uh, AI tool, sir? LLM. Uh, yeah, Copilot is again a good engine, and uh, the you are talking about the interface. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so that is not part of our presentation today, but we can take it at the end. Okay. Especially will... in case of our language, uh, English language things. Sure, sure, sure. We can uh, you can talk about it uh, maybe towards the end. Uh, that is not part of our presentation today, but I'll I'll try my best to spare some time for it, and we'll discuss about it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So I'll now take you to uh, another AI tool, which is an Indian tool, AI for Bharat. Okay. AI for Bharat is developed by IIT Madras, and it has eleven Indian languages uh, as the source language and target language. So. This is uh, a very good initiative on behalf of government of India by IIT Madras, and it has it is dealing with large language models, uh, automated speech recognition, text to speech, machine translation, uh, OCR, and transliteration. Transliteration and translation are two different things. I hope you all know this. Translation is from one language to another language, and transliteration is, for example, I can write. Uh, on switch up on the, the Telugu line in Roman script. So that is transliteration. Okay. So 
I'll now show you some of the models that uh, AI for Bharat has. This is the link for uh, that is uh, actually this link is not working at the moment. That's why I didn't want to show you uh, because things are under repair at the moment. Uh, but I would like to show you the models. This link will give you the detailing about how the works are happening and what all is available there. So I'll show you the models. So these are the models. Indic speech to text conformer, indic speech to text whisper. I mean, it can detect the whispering sound also. When indic translate, indic translation. So you can see all of these models have indic in the beginning. So this is particularly customized for Indian languages, and that's why they are using indic as a term in the title. So indic text to speech, indic br deferred, then named entity recognition, and speech to speech. So I'll, this is the latest phenomenon in generative AI. So I would like to show this to you. Huh? So you can see this is the interface for speech to speech by AI for Bharat. Okay. So here you can see the number of languages that are available. See. These are the languages for which you can translate your audio from one language to another. So these are 11 languages in total. So suppose I select Hindi and I select the target language as the second language. I also can upload files from here and I can give a direct command to all. मेरा नाम राजीव है मैं एक शिक्षक हूं सो यू सी इंस्टेंटली इट ट्रांसलेटेड द टेक्स्ट इनटू कन्नड़ हियर एंड देन यू कैन प्ले इट एज़ वेल आई एम ऑन अ desktop so i don't know how to play it for you and make you hear it you all can uh, do it for yourself when i give you time for hands on okay so you could see uh, this is from text to text and this translated text is available in the audio form also this is a two second clip and nanno hisru raji nanno shikshaka I am not a Kannada speaker, but I could say these two sentences to do this. Okay, so this is how it is very useful for a multilingual classroom. So I give you uh, some time now for hands-on practice for this. So all of you are required to now uh, work on your subject, whatever is your teaching subject. Select one chapter from that, take a PDF and one para, just work on one para of that chapter and translate it either by using AI for Bharat or by CIDR and then submit it in the chat box okay? and address it directly to me, not to everyone. Okay? So it's three o'clock by my watch. Uh, in seven minutes, I think this, should, this task should be done. Please go ahead.
Uh, so do you submit the screenshots or what's it? Uh, yes, that would be good if you share the screenshot. But sir, quality of translation in the cider AI, yeah, sir, I uh, translated the text uh, from English to Bangla, uh, but quality is not good, sir. When I, the Bengali translation or transliteration, I don't know whether it is transliteration. Okay, okay. So, so which was the GPT you used? Hello. I I I uh, took it from uh, cider dot AI, sir, and uh -huh. uh, it was. So in cider.ai, I showed you multiple uh, GPTs, okay? It's a yeah. cider fusion, I think. So cider, cider fusion. fusion. Okay. So, so, yes, sure. so try it with Llama and uh, then try it with uh, GPT-4 also. Yeah. Okay, sir. Yeah. See, OpenAI was the premier in this. They started with this yeah. GPT. So their, their uh, you know, model is has a maximum number of language models. So their output is generally the best uh, because the pre-training data, amount of pre-training data that they have is something quite large in volume. So in comparison to that, Cider Fusion might not have that much. So if you are, uh, this is a general suggestion to all the participants. Please do not be satisfied with just one output by one GPT. Uh, I showed you in my demonstration how can you select the other GPTs. There are five of them at the moment. Two and three are going to be added by months. So switch to another GPT, then compare, and then select the uh, answer. Okay, don't stick to just one. Because this is a new, uh, like I told you, it's an evolutionary stage, so you cannot find perfect things in that of the world. Uh, hi, sir. Lama is, I have changed it uh, to Lama, sir. And Lama is, I think, better, sir, the translation. Yeah, yeah. Lama and yes, GPT-4 will give you better results. Please share your screenshots, meanwhile, if you are done with the work. I can see several new messages. Okay. Yeah. Rajeshwar sir from Sainik School has translated uh, something in Hindi. Okay. Margin of Sadhapni Diary is Kebari Media. All right. Asha, Asha B. Patil, madam, also has shared screenshot. Great. Bhatra sir has also shared. Aranya Chatterjee's madam has also shared. All right. Okay. So I would like to assume that you have got a uh, hang of it pretty well. So that is actually quite good. Okay. 
Thank you, Ms. Anur, sir. You shared it uh, on the screen. So, uh, I would now like to show you some uh, additional, uh, not tools, but resources, which would be useful for a multilingual classroom. Uh, I hope you all are comfortable now with these two tools that we have learned today, CIDR and AI for Bharat. Okay. Uh, AI for Bharat is an Indian tool and it will have Indian corpus. So it might give you better results also. We expect it to be like that. Uh, but uh, many of its uh, models are at the developmental stage. So keep checking them, AI for Bharat. Uh, also, uh, as and when you find time. Great, great. Uh, so, I would like to share my screen once again with you all. So, we were here with AI for Bharat. Uh, all right. So uh, there are several other resources that I wanted to share with you for a multilingual vocabulary purpose. So one of them is Bharat Vani. You will find, you know, these many languages. Uh, can someone confirm if my screen is visible to you? Yes, sir. Great. So yes, see, yes, I have sir. see, I have put my cursor here uh, on top left corner uh, languages. I'm hovering my cursor here. You can see, and these many languages are visible. So uh, I heard some of you asked about uh, the minority languages or the dialects that are spoken. Uh, in your state and you talked about multilingual education in that or how to get content in that. So this is this can be one of the places. See, we these are the non-scheduled languages which are also there. So this is by uh, CIIL, Central Institute of Indian Languages located in Mysore. So they are uh, doing this work here. So you can explore all of this. I'll just show the dictionary to you. And in the dictionary, uh, you can see these are the languages. So you can select one source language and you can uh, find things that you require. Uh, so I searched the word artificial in Odia, but it is not there. Uh, you can explore some other thing here. Uh, let us say something in Gujarati. So, since I didn't select the languages at the bottom, it is giving me results in all the languages. You can see here it is giving in Kannada here, it is giving in Korea here. Okay. Uh, it's given in Hindi, it's in yeah. Tamil, like this. So yeah. wherever the word artificial is used in their purpose, it is giving us the result. I searched it in the main here, main box. So is there is there the possibility of pronunciation for each language of the each word, sir? Yes, yes, yes. That is that is a possibility. I'll show you some more uh, resources. That is a possibility. It will give you the pronunciation. For example, here multimedia is there, but all the things in this are not functional at the moment. So uh, I cannot show you the pronunciation, but this uh, this multimedia is at the moment operational at the level of audio textbooks. 
Okay, so you can see SCRT Manipur has worked a lot on this. Uh, similarly, uh, SCRT Tamil Nadu has also worked a lot on this. Tamil Bhasha and Tamil Bhasha Mandakini is there. So you can just explore. I'm just showing you the resources you all can explore. So please note down the website. It's bharatwani.in. Bharatwani.in and you can explore it. Okay. You can take a screenshot of this also. Uh, next is technical terminology. So those who are from science background and teach science, you can find uh, the technical terms in multiple languages here. Okay, so you can see here, I wrote artificial and for that I have found in the subject of chemistry in Hindi medium. It's written there. So similarly, it's in Gujarati, it's in Kannada, Malayalam. You can see here. I'm opening my cursor, so you can see. So here, you know, uh, I had my default language as Hindi to find it. Uh, if we change it to English, let's just say. So it is giving you. So this is for context, and this is for feedback. This is important. The context, if you go, it will give you these. For example, uh, artificial. Propagation is Kritrim Samcharan in Hindi. So similarly, it will give it to you if you select the language here. Uh, you can select the languages here from the glossary, whatever is your uh, desired field. Then you can get the results here. So in case you see, I told you these things are at the evolutionary stage at the moment. So CIL has opened it for feedback. If you find that this particular translation of this technical term is not correct, you can create a feedback and write about it. Okay. So it is important uh, that we contribute this way also uh, for the development of the corpus. Apart from this, we have LDCIL. This is also a big consortium, Linguistic Data Consortium for Indian Languages. Uh, here also, you can find uh, substantial resources for your desired language. You can see here, Canada Sentence Aligned Speech Corpus, Konkani, Maithili here, uh, so Malayalam here, Marathi here. So this also is a good resource. Uh, these are their tools. Uh, at the moment, Anubadika is operational. These are these were uh, sub sandran was something that I was using uh, last month, but I don't know somehow this is not working at the moment. Uh, while I'm doing this, you can see the brain image here, the wild brain. So this at times might uh, appear to you as disturbing. So if you do not like it for because it's installed now is coming like that because it will always uh, be too eager to help you. So if you are not liking it, then you can close it for the time being. So Anvadika is uh, functional at the moment and here you have to select the language from C, these many languages. So all the scheduled languages have been covered here. So and apart from that, other languages are also there. So but this will be text-to-text uh, -text translation. Okay, AI for Bharat, I showed you about speech-to-speech -speech translation and that uh, speech gets converted into text and audio. So here it will be text-to-text. Uh, -text. Okay. Let us just try this. Let's say from Hindi to Gujarati to Gujarati. So if you write Uh, wait. Uh, one issue with this is, uh, which we all have written as a feedback, is that it has to be in the same script. For example, I'm, I have selected Hindi, so it has the input has to be in the Devanagari script. So I'm taking, let us say, English now. Maruna Rajiv Che. So this will translate. Uh, I hope you got sir, it. Sir, what is the maximum word limit for this, sir? Is there any? Uh, 
uh, at the moment, uh, we do not have come across any word limit as such, but uh, let us try. Uh, you try and copy it, copy something here and see if it is giving you, know, giving you any message for uh, word limits. Uh, inside a tool, there is a word limit. Uh, like yesterday I was trying, I had given an entire PDF and it denied that the word length was too much for it. So there is no definitive word limit in that, but it denied. So I I, got, I broke the 1200 uh, word document into uh, four or five different chunks and then got it translated. So do so, we have an option to upload a document here or it's no, 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 there is no option here. You have to, uh, you can cut paste the text on it. Oh. Uploading document is available with AI for Bharat and Saiten. Okay. If you have a bigger document, then go for those tools. So what is that option below, sir? Select a script to translate, right? Uh, these. There. Yeah. yeah. So. So I can now translate right. So for transliteration, this is given. Okay. So I click it here and it is giving the transliteration here. See it. Those from Telugu can confirm whether the transliteration is correct or not. Okay. Yeah. No, sir. There is a voice icon at the bottom. Ah, this is there, but uh, it, it asks you to record, but this is uh, not as robust as the iPhone Mara at the moment. You can click it and record. This may work for one, two sentences, but not for uh, either. Now, as this is uh, something which is developed by the Ministry of Education, again, do we have the possibility of errors in, in this? Yes, yes, yes. Like I told you in the beginning, that these are all at the evolutionary stage and the data training is happening. So errors are definitely, errors can definitely be there. Uh, sir, uh, I have one question, sir. Uh, is this uh, the translation or the process of using in, uh, for Bharat or AI, can mm -hmm. you use only in classroom or we can also actually use those translations in our paper, in presentation, I mean, it, yes, yes, yes. Will not uh, it be regarding that plagiarism? No, 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 no. There is a new ruling about that. Uh, if you are using AI tools, you need to, uh, in the reference section, you need to mention the portion which has been uh, used with AI help. So you need to cite, you need to cite the portion and the AI tool that was used. Am I clear? Uh, plagiarism okay, will Thank be you, it will be still plagiarism. Suppose uh, I have made uh, suppose there is an idea in my research paper, and the research paper is in English, and you copied that research paper and translated using let us say Anuvadika or AI for Bharat or Cider into Tamil, and you uh, publish it, sent it for a for publication in a research journal in Tamil, but that translation is of course a change of medium, but the idea is still mine. So you need to, the way we cite in other research papers, the resource person, you need to cite it. Okay, if you do not cite it, then it will again fall in uh, plagiarism's case. But uh, the portion to avoid that, you can uh, give the citation. And you also need to mention uh, the AI tool that was used and for the purpose and for the portion of, for the chunk of the research paper, uh, you use the AI tool. All right. I hope I have answered. Yes, sir. Thank you. Great. Next is, uh, again, a multilingual app developed by the English and Foreign Languages University, Hyderabad. This is called English Pro. This is an app. So uh, this was launched in 2020. And in between, they withdrew it. They relaunched it because there were some glitches and they, were, they enlarged the corpus. So, now this is again a very good uh, tool for English language learning from various other mother tongues of India. Okay, target language is English and uh, source languages are Indian languages. So you can download this uh, also. 
English bro, it looks like this from the English and Foreign Languages University, Hyderabad. Um, and make use of it. So this is all uh, from my side. Uh, we are now uh, open for questions. And uh, before we go for question, I have a quiz here. So I would like you all to attempt this. I'll paste the link in the chat box. Okay, so I have pasted the links for the quiz there. Uh, the quiz uh, is not of any qualification nature. This is just to uh, recapitulate what we learned today. So you can uh, attempt it as and when you wish. I would like you to attempt it right away. And meanwhile, uh, if you have any question, then you can ask. Uh, you can see my thank you page in front of you. I generated this uh, using AI for R. You can see, and I, I defined the languages that I wanted in it, and it has given me this yeah. as a result. So this is an example of text to image. Thank you. We are now open for questions and any other feedback that you might have. So should impressive. you submit the submit the form later, sir, or right now, sir? You have see. I told you this is not of any qualification. This is not of any qualification nature. Uh, if you can, then it is good. Uh, however, there would be a quiz which will involve questions from this session also, which will be an overall summative assessment for all the participants, which might be probably shared. Uh, Tomorrow, I guess, at the end of the day, probably. Hello, but sir. I, but I would love, uh, I'd love it if you uh, respond to my quiz. That will give me an idea uh, if I was clear in communicating things to you. Yes, yes, somebody was saying something. No, sir, sir. Yeah, of course, sir, your session is very uh, good, sir. Actually, I've learned a lot of things, sir, from the session, uh, then the earlier sessions. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Rahman, sir. Thank you. Yes, madam. Sir, I'm very <laughs> Only thing is that if the woman, uh, the, the doc which we were projecting, if it would be shared, it will be nice because some of the links we were not able to get at. At least at our convenience, at our pace, we we'll be able to work on this also. The uh, document yeah. which you were projecting. Uh, you, the you, mean, you, which you, were... you want the links that I showed towards the end of the presentation? Yeah, so that we can just try out each at our own pace. So now uh, the are is struggling work on the different Sure, things. sure, so sure. I'm, I'm, I'm writing, right. all right. I'm writing all the uh, web links that I used on the chat box. You may copy it from there. Okay. Fine, uh, fine. So, yeah. However, this entire presentation will also be available to, for you people for reference. Thank you very much, sir. It was very informative. Need of the art. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sorry to ask you again, sir. Yes, so, uh, regarding this quiz, uh, hmm. then I heard that it can be uh, submitted uh, by tomorrow also. This is what I heard, sir. Or is it compulsory to submit now, sir? This is for particularly for this session. If you submit it, this would. Uh, be a feedback for me so it will be useful for me and 
as a teacher, you under you. I I hope you definitely know what is the importance of feedback. Uh, sir, okay. yes, sir. but sir, then uh, it happens that there are some questions where uh, we have to uh, read, uh, like uh, with some thought <laughs> and just trying to and then remember all the points connected with them. So at least it will be better if you give some more time to uh, submit this quiz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying, I'm not asking you to submit it right away. Uh, yes, sir. So, so thank it's you, perfectly sir. fine. I have, I have uh, pasted uh, all the web links that I used in this presentation. So yes, now, Premlata, madam, you can take a look and others who uh, you, were interested, please take a look and uh, let me know if there is something that you still want me to uh, write it here or uh, paste it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm actually trying out one by one. Uh, please, please, please. It will be good if you uh, copy all of them and place it somewhere in a word uh, document or a personal chat box. Mm -hmm. for, because once the meeting is over, that. once the meeting is yeah. over, this will go away. Oh, 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 oh. I'll yeah. do that right away. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Any questions, participants? No, sir. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you so much. It was a nice experience to interact with you all. I hope uh, the session has been useful to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, can I get your sir email mail ID, sir? If you don't want, sir. Yeah, sure. I'll write it on the chat box. Okay. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you